nuevamente muchas gracias a todos los que nos acompañan hoy y que se Thanks again for all those who join us today and who have connected from different parts of the world to listen, learn and share the different initiatives that are being implemented around the world with the aim of improving opportunities for access to employment and ICTs for people with disabilities. For those who cannot uh, see me, I'm a fair skin, complexion woman, dressing a t-shirt, a red t-shirt, black trousers, I'm a person with disabilities, so I'm sitting on a, a wheelchair. But it has come to start with our first keynote speeches. Our first topic is inclusive employment. The vision of the IALO and the IDB, we will learn about the perspectives of inclusive employment for international organizations. We will have the presentations. We will have presentations by Daniela Bass, director of the Inclusive Social Development Division of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And Fabio Bertranu, director of the International Labor Organization's Office for the Southern Cone of Latin America. That's right, Carolina, before we go on, I would like to describe myself for those who cannot see me. I'm a woman with fair complexion. Today I'm wearing a brown suit and I have a scarf on my neck. I have the special mission of introducing Daniela Bass, who unfortunately could not be with us live today. Daniela is director of the Division of for Inclusive Social Development of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. She is a political scientist with a specialization in international politics, a qualified, uh, qualified journalist and multicultural coach. She also held managerial positions until two, the 2000 in the private sector in Italy. It's a real honor for us to have her present at this conference for the second year in a row. And we, have, we are very grateful to hear her experience. Esteemed colleagues and distinguished participants. Como directora de la División para el Desarrollo Social Inclusivo de las Naciones Unidas y su Departamento de Asuntos Sociales y Económicos, tengo el honor de unirme a esta Zero Conference sobre el empleo y las TICs para hacer una charla principal en esta sesión plenaria sobre el empleo. Tal como se me ha solicitado, presentaré una visión general del marco de políticas que apoyan un empleo inclusivo para las personas con discapacidad y su estado actual, especialmente a la luz de la crisis del COVID-19. Y también exploraré un número de recomendaciones de políticas y soluciones innovadoras para seguir progresando. Mi pregunta es entonces, ¿deberían las personas con alguna discapacidad ser contratadas? Y recordemos que no hablamos acerca de un grupo homogéneo de personas, dado que hay muchos tipos diferentes de discapacidades físicas, sensoriales y de todo tipo que son a veces incluso invisibles y que se pueden considerar desde diferentes perspectivas morales, legales o económicas. Y por ejemplo, cuando hablamos del aspecto moral, estos son los valores de una cultura o en otros casos la imagen de una empresa. En otro ejemplo, en términos económicos, si hay un precio más alto para los gobiernos tener ciudadanos sin empleo y para las empresas que pueden recibir subsidios y otro tipo de incentivos y entonces tenemos por último el aspecto legal. We have the legal aspect. It's a fundamental right for the well-being and dignity and include people with disability to have a, a positive impact in the quality of life of the people. So as you see, since I was a young person, I've been paraplegic in ever since I've been on a wheelchair. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. So apart from sharing 
with you that this is important for a dignified work. I also want to share from a personal perspective how essential is the economic empowerment and in the same way to have an independent life for a people with uh, for a person with disabilities. Now, employment and dignified work are needed to break the poverty vicious cycle because there are people with uh, having these issues with or without physical disabilities and there and it's something that cannot be developed because of the differences that are in the work labor and the people that have the possibility of work that people with disability has are not the same because they do not have access to the same possibilities. There are international agreements on the rights of people with disabilities. You can find the Article 27 of the Convention for the Rights with People with Disability or And we have the 2030 agenda for the sustainable development in their main goals are 17 that have been adopted by the UN in the objective number eight is to have a full and productive work for everyone. Let's analyze objective 8.5, which in particular seeks to have a full employment and dignified work for all people, women and men explicitly for those having some disability and also a, a fair payment for the same job that someone is going to do from here to 2030. There are some international agreements, agreements from 2015 that are more recent, like the action agenda that talks about the development and financing for the Samoa growth 2014 on the circumstances, special circumstances of some islands that are development and having opportunities for people with disability and also aim to the participation of fair possibilities for men and women with some um, disabilities. The last agreement um, highlights the high rates of unemployment and they call for the development of technical skills for people with disabilities so all the people can participate. Considering that tourism is a really uh, milestone of those islands, and for instance, El Camino in Samoa, the opportunities for employment for people with disabilities would work with a sustainable tourism in the objectives recognize the importance of the education and the work opportunities and training continuous training it also calls for the taking the steps for maybe helping people with disabilities so they have an effective access to technical vocational schools and they can have um, directives on education and also on services for work placement and also the need to grace uh, educational systems that are inclusive. These alliances have the sustainable development objective number four. That has to deal with, has to do with education and related to inclusive uh, quality for education for all the world. So they give us opportunities of learning throughout life related to the 4.5 objective that has to deal with the importance of same levels of education for everyone, even including the people with disabilities. And it includes other provisions to optimize opportunities for people with disabilities so they can participate in the labor market. For instance, to create a uh, conscience of the skills of people that has people with disabilities so they have more access to 
physical environments, transportation, and communication. In 2018, the published data regarding the development of disabilities as the vis general vision of the situation of the people with disabilities in several spheres of life included employment and the findings show that our society keeps on having a lot of to do a lot to deal with improving um, inclusivity to make this a reality for everyone people with disabilities have still have an access um, limited access to the work market employment in comparison with the people uh, population uh, that have 15 years of age or more have more opportunities than people with disabilities. Additionally, people that are hired with disabilities have differences in the salaries. And there are places, there is a lack of places with, of, there are uh, places of, of work and housing have problems uh, for people with disabilities and they consider the place of work that are not accessible for people with disability and women with disability are still at a disadvantage when looking for an opportunity for, for a job it's a double uh, discrimination because of gender and the situation of disabilities compared with men with disabilities women with disabilities disabilities have, have higher rates of unemployment and they have less opportunity to have a leadership position or a senior position also people have some with people with some sort of uh, autism and that kind of disabilities have less opportunities to be hired just in some countries legislation legislation promotes their social inclusion, but education and opportunities in, and work opportunities are not really useful, as I said, if transportation and other basic services, as for instance, toilets, cafeterias, and other reasonable places and tools to be able to perform work are not accessible, that won't be possible to do. However, despite these challenges, there are many good practices and success histories from which we can learn countries in all over the world that has have adopted employment and policy policies on laws for people with disabilities so over 60 percent of the countries in this moment have some labor laws prohibiting labor discrimination on people with disabilities in fact this and to guarantee or ensure possibilities for people for people with uh, people with disabilities, some financial programs also support people so people with uh, disabilities can access access training and education. So, to improve employment for people with disabilities, we need for employers to hire a certain percentage of people with disabilities. And this has been adopted for at least 99 countries. Now, the number of people will for, go from one to 15% in effective programs also include the payment of fines for those companies that are not getting to the amount of people with disabilities hired and there is a special fund that is used for these programs of including people with disabilities in employment. Now, from the progress that has been made, uh, COVID-19 pandemic has increased the problem for people with disabilities. I mean, this pandemic is has been a challenge for everyone, but it has a real impact of people with disabilities in general in the all the aspects of life but more than people more than a half of people with uh, disabilities started working remotely and they have been having issues uh, with the access to computers internet connection many workers with disabilities have lost their jobs 
because companies have been reducing their budgets to face the challenges of the pandemic. So they are the first ones to be fired. Having said that, the pandemic has also created opportunities. For instance, there are some barriers that are there, but the response has uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic has increased the remote work, facilitating the availability to work positions for people with disabilities. However, this doesn't mean that we have to eliminate the architecture barriers. The possibility of working remotely doesn't mean that it's the only solution, but just an additional solution. Of course, we can do this and we can work remotely with the condition that certain platforms of, uh, for access are created, designed and maintained with accessibility for all of us in mind. We need to, to reconstruct, rebuild something better together and to identify solutions that allows in the 2030 agenda as we go and recover from the pandemic now the international cooperation can play an important role for inclusion the inclusion of people with disabilities in the work market so in terms of work in this area area the division i lead the division for the inclusive social development has ha has been implementing a project on young employment for people with disabilities on Argentina, Peru, and under this initiative, the Ecuador, Ecuador government has been establishing good practices for employing, employment of young people with disabilities and the directives have been validated. And then will be it will be the base for training workshops. The government of Peru has some bonuses for local and regional governments and on NGOs organizations for uh, those who are working with people with disabilities and their focuses in the successful communication in the labor market, the creation of conscience to have reasonable opportunities. These projects also include some measures specific for COVID-19. CEPAL has published the COVID-19 report in Latin America, Latin America to mitigate the impact and to protect the, the rights to ensure the, the good opportunities for today and tomorrow. And this report is given from the 19 answers provided from the governments in Latin America where the COVID-19 pandemic has had a great impact on the inclusion of people, adults and young people with disabilities. And also the project supports a workshop on the challenges on employment for people, for young people and adults in the context of the pandemic with the participation of representatives from the government of Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Colombia and Peru, and also organizations of people with disabilities. So of course, nothing is about us without including us. So this workshop is a cooperation in the South. They're important in the same way, opportunities for a major collaboration. And talking about the current breaches and employ employment for people with disabilities, there are different organizations and parts, interests, stakeholders that are relevant on national legislation that protect people with disabilities from discrimination in all labor topics. Governments can play a, a very important role on disability in the public sector, including also provisions that aim com uh, companies to em employ people and also in the public procurement systems that are key to support the entrance and retention of uh, work workforce that they need to be inclusive so people with uh, disabilities are included in service public uh, public services education entrepreneurship training 
and microfinancing because as you see politics must be implemented for retaining work and the options to go back to work so people with disability who were working are included and including people with mental health so to promote the participation in the labor work of people with disabilities protection social protection must be designed to provide and guarantee the extra costs related to disabilities and to invest on monitoring and evaluate the results. That's also necessary to improve the condition of the people with disabilities on their employment. The robust system must be created. Uh, data, data must be collected on people with disability and unemployment and the state must support employment for the people with disability in the private sector where the number of people that need to be hired need to change it has to be implemented with an evaluation system for people with disability and we would like to conclude asking all of us to remember that a people a person with disabilities they have more probabilities to find the best solutions to complex and unexpected problems. Because in fact, we, I include myself, since I have a disability, we lead with difficult personal situations and environments that are not always done to suit our needs. And we need to adapt and to find solutions to problems and solutions in life that people without disabilities do not face. And now with COVID and the different environments that, ha that people had, to face, people with disability had to face in different levels with disability have to face, well, the conventions and the ODS are key. So, so we use our skills at its best with the people that we live and with all the people with different skills and abilities. Thank you. We thank Daniela and the entire team of the Division for Inclusive Social Development at UNDESA for their words today. To continue with our session, we'll introduce our next guest. I have the honor to introduce Fabio Bertrano. He's the director of the International Labor Organization's Office for the Southern Corn of Latin America. Fabio has a PhD in economics and also specializes in labor market, unemployment issues, social protection, social security, and pensions. He's been an ILO official since 2001. Let's listen to his interesting presentation. Allow me to start by thanking the invitation of Zero Project to this important conference to contribute in the strengthening of the commitment of the actors in, that are institutions from the productive area and social areas to promote, protect, and move forward in the rights of people with disability and improve their uh, daily lives. Between them, their right to work, uh, specifically decent work. We have to widen more decisively our work for the rights of the people with disability. The ILO, uh, with their three-part constituents, the, go the governments, employers, the workers are committed in the dialogue and discuss as uh, this conference proposes the most innovative models to strengthen the inclusive employment and the development of technology and innovation that promotes inclusion, but also to explore the most effective ways to promote them and uh, disseminate them. I believe that we are in front of strong crosswords that have three important tendencies and current circumstances. Uh, the first dimension has to do with the tendencies imposed by this that we denominated 
challenges about the future of labor. In the last years, we have discussed intensely about these dimensions. And in 2019, just before the pandemic, uh, after many years of debate, we uh, converted the OIL in the nominated declaration of the Sentinel of the IL of the Future of Work. This declaration that gathers, that collects the willingness and the dialogues from the uh, stakeholders of the labor work understands the renovation of the paradigms, including mainly the environmental dimension, the need to have a more transformative agenda in, in topics of gender and women inclusion, and of course, the consequences and opportunities given by the 4.0 industrial revolution, this higher and growing automation and digitalization that they face uh, the words of the production and the labor. The second factor important has to, the second important factor has to do with the productivity issues in Latin America and the Caribbean, a big productive heterogeneity, the uh, convivence on different uh, areas that are integrated in the globalized world with other sectors that are behind in productivity that don't have access to integration and the uh, international supply chains, access to commercial and productive policies, and this generates uh, high informality and labor precarity. This is given, this produces inequalities, social inequalities that are higher compared to other countries. And the third factor is the pandemic due to COVID-19 that has created the highest fall of the GDP that we have recorded in our region with important consequences in destroying uh, jobs, companies, and the hours worked in 2020, Latin America was the most affected region of the world by the pandemic, uh, 23 million job losses. The most affected areas were specifically where the employment with people with disabilities is focused, the personal services, commerce, the activities in the informal economy, for example, street markets, even if the economic recovery is, is on, the scars due to the pandemics will last many years. How to renovate and impulsionate our a agenda to eliminate barriers for people living with disability from the OIL, from the ILO, we promote a decent job that is part of the uh, sustainable developments to 2030. And we are focusing in the sustainable objective number eight uh, for a decent job. And also others that promote the uh, global welfare, that have a specific foundations for social welfare and others. So because of the global effects of the pandemics, the, the three parties from the world uh, together with the ILO some weeks ago and the International Conference of ILO, they called internationally to recover the participation of people. This is a collective call where responsibility is not, not only from the governments, but from the companies and the union workers, the workers union. So this has an emphasis to have a better recovery. The crisis has been devastating for many that had a job before the pandemic and thus due to the sanitary measures and the restrictions to movement has generated a loss of jobs between women and young people and to other people with higher vulnerabilities, such as people with disabilities. But recovery gives us a chance. And this chance it has to do with a better recovery. We need to provide equality opportunities to people that are behind, that are being excluded for uh, the traditional employments and also for the newer ones that are uh, driving 
driving this economic recovery. For example, uh, remote work was just as an answer to continue with the production and the operations of the companies and the different governmental uh, activities. This modality allowed to keep jobs and generate other ones for people that are facing barriers in the job market. Nevertheless, there are new risks for examples in the safety and health in the work, psychosocial hazards as well. They can create another kind of barriers, for example, those linked to gaps in the digital skill. This is a very sensible topic in gener for, to, gener to generate policies for people living with disability. That's why it's key to move on and rethink two new kinds of policies and tools to move on and deepen the transformation of institutions related to uh, labor. And I'm um, talking about the labor institutions related to training for uh, work, the public employment, administration of labor, including labor inspection, social security, and also regulations about the job uh, relations and collective negotiation as well. Linked to this would be to reivindicate the social dialogue for the uh, labor inclusion. So there are different, this dialogue needs to include more and more people with living with disabilities in order to create new uh, agreements, social agreements that allow us to uh, create guidelines where the people with disability have visibility to the governments, companies, and the unions. From the ILO, apart from working with our three constituents, we are supporting different initiatives. For example, with the organizations of companies, so they create networks for inclusive companies. We are supporting with the technical cooperation that allow us to uh, keep up with the professional training methodologies that improve in a reasonable way and create new uh, job positions. We are uh, serving public companies and enterprises in order to improve the digital and physical accessibility by applying the principles of universal design, eliminating the existing barriers, physicals or and non-physical. The, these ones are the ones that generate, for example, creates social discrimination, language barriers, the inflexible barriers, the cultural stereotypes and the learning environments that are not inclusive. Allow me to wrap up by highlighting that it's essential to work together through the social dialogue with workers, the employers and the governmental institutions, specifically by activities that deepen the sensibilization and training for the different uh, publics uh, of interest with the aim to have and configure the real culture where all the people are valued. Thank you very much and I wish you success and in the discussions. Le damos nuevamente la bienvenida a Fabio y agradecemos. Welcome you again, Fabio, and thank you for your willingness, support, and presence at our conference. We would like to know your point of view on some specific topics. To start this round of questions, we heard in your speech about the Industrial Revolution. This point is extremely relevant since in the, in the new generation of industries based on globalization and digitalization, People with disability are potential workers. But how do you ensure decent work for people with disability in this context? What are the specific ILO's recommendations for employers in this matter? Hola, Carola, Carolina. Eh, Hi, Carola, Carolina. Thank you very much for having me here in this important conference and in this panel. Well, specifically, I believe that it's important to remember again which are the principles and the fundamental rights and principles 
of the ILOs for all of the workers, including the people with disability. So this is a starting point that is essential to keep on working with the governments and the stakeholders in the job market. When we say fun principles, uh, fundamental rights and principles, we are talking about the fundamental rights of the workers and the collective ones. So in this regard, non-discrimination, the possibility of having a freely a freely chosen job, having a baseline of condition is fundamental, but and also having the freedom as association for the workers and the companies through the uh, companies' uh, organizations. So there is a big space, a very uh, big road to to be in to give more participation to people, not only individually, in respecting these fundamental principles and rights in their uh, in, in their job places, but also how this projects into the organizations. And I believe that these will allow us to move the barriers of inclusion in the in the labor world. So maybe we can uh, deep, we can go deep into this topic with the next questions, but I would like to uh, remember this group of fundamental principles of rights. And from here to work with, in cooperation with the companies associations to promote good practices that the ILOs is working with the different stakeholders. In my presentation, I mentioned some of the how to improve the physical and digital accessibility, having into consideration these principles of universal design and eliminating the barriers. Obviously, we have a very long road out ahead of us, but if this is not a uh, gets to the companies, they won't understand the inclusion barriers and obviously to implement solutions. If you if you agree, we have a lot to talk from your question, but I would like to finish here so I can listen to other questions. Thank you very much, Fabio, for such an interesting point of view. And uh, one of the things that both the COVID-19 pandemic and the Industrial Revolution have demonstrated is the opportunity that remote work represents for people with disability. However, for this new industry to provide decent work for people with disability, access to the internet is essential. So how would you approach the role of the public and private sectors in promoting universal access to the internet in Latin America and the Caribbean? Uh, Big topic. This is very important. And honestly, we have advanced already at the beginning of the pandemic in different institutions, there were many proposals, but the pandemic accelerated the importance of working intensely. Those aspects and dimensions involved in the in the remote work. You know that there are two uh, types of uh, remote work and there was a legal frame for uh, remote work through a uh, an agreement with the ILO that was promoting the kind of work, but it didn't include the aspects related to new dimensions uh, that the information technology has. The remote work is mediated by communication and, and communication and information technologies that open big possibilities for new jobs, new ways of organizing services, and also possibilities uh, of employment for people with disability, but there are also new risks. I already mentioned this uh, 
psychosocial risks, but also we need to think about regulation. Many countries in Latin America have advanced during this pandemic time in organizing new laws to regulate the remote work. Chile, for example, adopted a law just at the beginning of the pandemic and the pandemic. And then Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay are following the Chilean path. So big advancements in the regulatory framework. We need to move forward even more in implementation. There are big challenges. Most of the laws say that the companies, the employers need to provide the internet connection, the work materials for remote work. They need to guarantee a specific thing. So there we see how the, uh, the legislation framework will uh, watch how these laws are implemented. And lastly, the role of the public sector by regulating and overseeing the regulations, but also making the public investment easier. So all of the tasks are effectively done and people with disability are benefiting from this. And, and it's needed to invest in internet connection, uh, digital infrastructures, and there are many and different proposals working with different UN agencies, and we will we want to create a basic basket of connectivity and information and communication technology, but this is very costly for the states, and we need to think about how to uh, mobilize public resources to put into practice this basket, this very important tool so it can be effectively install uh, the remote work for many workers. So this clearly leaves us with several challenges to pursue. We'd like to address a third topic. An extremely important value, as you said, is social dialogue. At this conference, we'll have the opportunity to hear from government authorities, inclusive companies, social entrepreneurs, disability rights activists, and their representative organizations. But we would like to know more about the ILO's work with workers' organizations, workers' unions. In Latin America, how? Has the ILO served the participation and representation of people with disabilities in workers' organizations? How should social actors strengthen these spaces for participation and ensure that the voices of people with disabilities are heard? That's right, Carola. So this is a big challenge that we have ahead of us. We have moved on a lot, but there is a very long road to follow. So from our experience, and from the regular work that we have with the uh, different associations, we have noted that there is a big commitment, enthusiasm in approaching inclusion in general, but specifically the inclusion, the inclusion of people with disability Obviously, we need to work in two fronts. First, that the uh, workers' union assume as an agenda uh, those works, those agendas for works, and to have a wider perspective in inclusion. And we need to work with them, along with them, to have to so they have more information, more strengths to initiate that dialogue that obviously is reflected in what we are doing with the employers, the same work that we do in the unions, we do with the companies, organizations, so, so they can have a dialogue at the, same, at, the, at the same level, with the same information, with the same opportunities and risks that different uh, job organizations have. So, we can guarantee a better inclusion of people 
with disability and we also need to work with the workers union and the companies associations so people with disability have leadership positions in the organizations in the unions and in the companies also we are promoting that more women can be represented in the uh, in the boards uh, so they can have a more effective and more visible participation so in that in that regard we are including in our agenda the dialogue and also we are allowing to have leadership roles and not only of the unions but the companies and people living with disability that's how we can make sure that the topics are known that there is participation of the stakeholders that know firsthand which are the main barriers and the opportunities that the different ways of labor inclusion will create. Thank you very much, Fabio, once again, for being part of our Zero Project Conference for Latin America and the Spanish-speaking world 2021. We wish you success and an excellent day. Thank you very much, Carola. Carolina, for this initiative also that you are doing in the, in the region. Big success for your conference. Thank you very much. We invite you to continue attending the sessions schedule for today and tomorrow. Next, we invite you to connect to the live event, Impact Transfer, Scale Your Impact, which will be on Zoom and can be scheduled from our platform. This is an open session oriented to organizations of people with disability from Latin American countries. It aims to provide concrete tools and key elements for success when growing your impact for the inclusion of people with disabilities. You have the opportunity to hear from Loic van Kutzen, director of the Impact Transfer Program of Ashoka, the world's largest social entrepreneurship network. He's a social entrepreneur, an impact and sustainability consultant working at Ashoka, Austria, as well as Walburg, Walburga Frulich, executive director of Atempo Capito, an Austrian nonprofit organization that develops and distributes services and products to make life easier for people with disability. A very interesting session indeed. And then there's this specific programming for each channel. For any support needs, both technical and content, the help menu of our platform will guide you and solve your concerns. We thank you for your company and hope you enjoy each of the experiences presented today. Thank you very much.